So this week I added multiplayer to my game. My week was full of frustration, swearing and wondering why I decided to put myself through this. But here's how it went. Anyway, hey guys, it's Nori here. And before we go insane trying to implement multiplayer, I think I'll do something fun and add a jetpack. So our jetpack is basically a glorified jump function. And when our player holds down their right mouse button, it will just add some force to our rigid body. And Bob's your uncle, it works. We have a jetpack. Since we already implemented air control when we did the jump functionality, we're able to utilize it here. So our character is free to jetpack around and the controls feel surprisingly smooth. But it still does need some tweaking. Sometimes the animations get bug. I think my landing function isn't getting invoked properly. I figured our jetpack needed some type of fuel system, so as you can see at the bottom right of my screen, I have a blue fuel gauge. And when I hold down the right click, you can see, I jetpack around and my fuel gets depleted. And once it's fully depleted, I'm unable to fly. Again, the fuel drain rate and refuel rate will need some tweaking, but that will be handled once other people, you know, try it out and see how it goes. Since I have like 30 more minutes left today, I'll fix some of the weapon drop functionality. Um, a bit too much force. Ah, much better. Instead of adding force to the gun, I'm just setting its velocity. It seems to be working fine, except our player still gets knocked back when they throw it. I'm not quite sure how to fix this. Any suggestions? Oh, and um, do you guys like the implementation of a jetpack or should I axe it? Mmm, coffee. D-Day is upon us, boys. It's time to start implementing multiplayer. If you're seeing this video now, it means that I've succeeded. Well, at least I hope. I think for today's dive into multiplayer, we'll only get our toes wet and just add a basic lobby system. But first, to do some research. After consulting with Bixby, it told me to use Photon. And after watching and reading some docos, I was able to get the player connected to our cloud server and create or join an, an existing game and have another player actually join that same server. This may seem like a very basic and simple functionality, but boy oh boy it wasn't basic. Just some words of wisdom. If this is your first time making a game and you have little software engineering experience, don't make a multiplayer one. But we got it done with three crucial scripts. Firstly we have our Photon Connect script, script which connects the player to our cloud server. Then we have a button handler script that as you can guess, handles the buttons for creating and joining servers. And that feeds data into our Photon Handler, which will be persistent throughout all our scenes. This script is in charge of actually creating the servers, joining the servers, and disconnecting from them, etc. As well as actually moving between the scenes. So this is basically handling all of the communication to the servers. After a few more hours of frustration, swearing, and wondering why I decided to put myself through this, I was able to get a cube walking across the screen and another player being able to see it. However, the non-local player looks like they're on Wacky Tobacky or something and I have absolutely no idea why. But anyway, I guess we'll figure it out eventually. And here is a snippet of the code of how the movement is handled in Photon. Basically, the main takeaway here is that we only want to move our player, the local player, if we're the one that spawned that game object. Thus, we check if the Photon view is ours. Uh, at least I think that's how it works. So today I want to try to fix the play movement and get our character, not the cube, to move around the map. If it was anything like yesterday, this is going to be a long day. I realized yesterday that I didn't explain how spawning works, so here it is. On each of the scene I have a spawn point and its transform is given to the manager object along with our player's prefab. And in order to instantiate the player, we just have to append Photon Network to the instantiate function. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And since our game is not a game of cubes, we should probably spawn our player and not a cube. But um, I'm still having that issue of them going wacky on us. No idea why, time to debug. Okay, good news. I got it working, as you can see here. Right now, I have absolutely no idea why it's working. All I did was literally comment out all of the code until it started to work. As you can see here, we have commented out a lot of code. 
Now I have to figure whereabouts in this long ass class we have this issue. I finally found the bug. So, after debugging, and by debugging I mean commenting and uncommenting code until I see the bug reappear, I finally found out why the character keeps bugging out. It was this awake function that was messing me up. Now I'm not sure why awake doesn't work, maybe it messes with the, the photon network somehow, or does some other type of magic. Uh, anyway, at least I got it fixed. And for that, after 9 gruelling hours of programming, I think you can call it that, it's time to hit the sack. So after the last two days being absolutely exhausting, I decided I needed a day off and just did some light tasks on my game. I think you guys would have noticed it yesterday, but the animations still aren't synced yet, and the movement syncing still needs some work. The way I got the player's movement, both jumping and running, to be synced was to use a photon view and then attach some components for it to observe. I, I used the one that Photon provided, Rigid Body 2D, to sync up the physics, and then I added a custom sync function for the player's transform. And here is the magic on how it works. Basically, from my very beginner understanding, whenever we update the player's movement, we want to stream it to everyone, so we send it across our network. And we also want to see when other players move, so we want to receive other players' movement that have been sent across the network and then update them update their position in our view. I guess that's how it works? And here you can see it in action. Running and jumping are synced, relatively, you know, perfectly, still a bit of lag, but clearly we still need to implement our animation syncing. Thankfully, Photon has another view that we can observe, and that's the animator view. And with this attached to our Photon view component, we can easily sync our animations across the network. And it's synced. Now, unfortunately, this is all that I was able to develop this week. I know it doesn't look like much, but man, it took a long time. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more. See ya!